Hi, thank you for visiting my RC channel. My name is Bill and I'm a RC radio control enthusiast and I also do RC reviews. Thank you for joining me for this review of this MJX Bugs 4W B4W 5G Wi-Fi FPV brushless foldable RC quadcopter drone with a 2K camera on a single axis gimbal. Comes nicely packaged in this box. No carry handle. And if we have a look here, it's got GPS as I've mentioned. It's also got optical flow positioning, which is good. It's got ultrasonic which basically means it's got a sensor to assist the barometer for more stability for altitude hold. Comes with 7.6 volt, 3400 mAh modular LiPo battery. That should be good for a flying time of around 20 minutes. Got an adjustable camera. Got 2204 1350 kV brushless motors and an OLED LCD screen. And if we open it and look here, it comes very nicely packaged like this. And this is the Bugs 4W. Let me just unpack everything. This is everything unpacked and this is the Bugs 4W folded. Looks very smart. And if we have a look at the size compared to this SG906 Beast it's a bit longer a little bit wider and the depth probably not as much but not too much of a difference and we look at next to SJRC F11 which is about the same size as the Beast as well but longer also wider and not as much depth as the SJRC F11 either so while we're here let's just have a look at the weight it's got the battery in here And this comes in at 635 grams. The SARC F11 comes in at 516 grams. And the Beast with the battery in weighs 532 grams. So quite a bit of a weight difference between the other two with this and in size. But this comes with these MT2204 1350kV brushless motors. Whereas the other two come with 1806 1650kV brushless motors. So... This has a lower KV, which means it does more revolutions per minute. These are broader motors as well. And these motors have an upward lift of 230 grams. So it should handle the size and weight quite easily. This also has a flying speed of 40 kilometers per hour in top speed. And there are a couple of replicas of this 
design. I won't mention any names for now, but if they perform the same as this, I think the big difference between them will be the app. This also comes with one, two or three batteries. Modular battery. And this is the charging bay you get with this. So you can charge two batteries at the same time. The battery slot in here. And then it's got two USB ports. So I think one will have to plug in an additional USB cable to charge two batteries. Plug this into a USB source, not exceeding 5 volts. And you can charge the battery up with this. And before you insert the battery properly, you need to remove this protective strip or mold like this. And then I could go here, push, and make sure it clips and secures in position. And if you get two or three batteries, you also get a bag with it. We get this little tag that just tells us to remove the protective lenses on the radio control transmitter. It hasn't got a little tag. Oh, that's not too easy to remove. I'll remove this using a hobby knife out of the camera view. And also remove the protective cover on the camera here. Which also is not too easy to remove. I'll also use a hobby knife to remove this. So let me just do that quickly. So that's the scratch proof covers removed. And I'm also just removing this card now. In the front here, we've got this 2K camera that can record at 2048 by 1152 pixels and has a 110 degree field of view. And this is on a one axis gimbal. So it's also mounted on cushion mounts on the inside. And this can be adjusted using the remote controller from this angle to a full 90 degrees downwards. And if I fold it open, this is it with the arms unfolded. And the arms don't lock into position but hold quite firmly. Which may be good if you have a bit of an accident that it's not too rigid. And over here, we have an SD card slot and one must use a minimum class 10 up to 32 gigabytes. Got a power button on top here so if I press this it powers up and we can see green LEDs under the motor housings on all four arms. They are covered a bit. I don't know how bright they will really be, but we'll have to see. And then to power off, just press again. Lights go red, release. And then this is it powered off. Underneath here, we can see the optical sensors and what would appear to be ultrasonic sensors here too. 
the stands on this, there's two short stands on the ends of the back arms here. And then this is like a rubberized pad here and a rubberized pad there. Nothing on the front arm, so when this lands, it'll primarily land on this with the assistance of these two stands on the back arms. So very nice style, shape and design. I'm just going to fold the arms back in. Put it down here. Now the features this has is follow me and this locks on to your mobile device that you use with the app. It also has points of interest or circle mode to circle around a particular axis or point. And it also has tap fly or waypoint navigation to set waypoints on a map and fly to different positions. The range on this, it has a maximum altitude of 150 meters. The 2.4 gigahertz range with the radio controller can be up to 1,600 meters or 1 1.6 kilometers. And the FPV range without any interference and depending on your environment should be around 500 meters. But your mobile device must be 5G compatible. So it must be 802.11 AC Wi-Fi compliant. And the best way to determine this is to look at the network and connectivity settings on the specifications of your mobile device, as you can see in this picture. And if you see what's underlined in green, your device should be compatible. And if you can only see what's underlined in red, then your device will not be compatible. This is the radio controller comes with it. Two fake antennas. These pull down like this. You can hold here. Both of these are spring loaded. And this surprisingly only takes two AA batteries. I would have thought it should be more. But probably the signal's going to be maintained with the quadcopter battery broadcasting a stronger signal from the quadcopter. Nice to see icons. So here we've got takeoff and land. Here we can press to turn on the lights and also to change the speed between high and low speed. This adjusts the camera gimbal in flight and camera angle it has returned to home it has to take a photo with a short press take a video with a long press motor unlock and lock button and main power button here and then on the side here we can turn GPS on or off if you want to fly in manual mode this rock over here doesn't move and does nothing. And if we open up this little cover on top here, we pull this out so you can hold a mobile device. But these antennas are going to get in the way. But there are fake antennas, probably better to use as a stand. And then that just pops back down into there. We also get four spare propellers, unusually packaged, but that's good. And a Star Phillips screwdriver, some bugs decals, and then we get a quick start guide 
which just gives you the very basics that you can use in the field. QR codes to download the app and the app is called Bugs Go. They can download from the Apple Store, Google Play or directly from MJRC Net. It tells us how to do the compass calibration. Rotate it three times horizontally and then rotate it three times Vertically doesn't say that the camera must be up or down and also doesn't say whether it should be clockwise or counterclockwise So we'll find out when we do the compass calibration in the field Unlocking And nothing about calibrating the gyro And we get the full manual which comes on this nice paper in this booklet that is detailed, easy to read, good grammar, good diagrams. And uh, gives you more details and how it works. Attaching, removing propellers. The indicators on the OLED screen on the radio controller. Got an emergency stop if you press and hold the lo unlock lock button for three seconds. Now this has low battery warning and also should warn if it goes out of range on the radio controller. We'll need to see if it'll return to home automatically in the test flight. You can get a mode 2 if you prefer a mode 2 version. And here it does say when you do it vertically, put the camera upwards, but still not whether clockwise or counterclockwise. Oh, and to calibrate the gyros, we pull both sticks down and to the left to calibrate the gyro when it's in a flat level position. So a very good detailed manual with this too. And this is a Bugs Go app. You'll need to select B4W for this model. And we click on Go. We get these warnings and introduction. And this is the app interface. So with using the app, we've got all to TH, return to home here. This is to initialize point of interest. This do follow me. And this is a tap fly waypoint navigation with the map. We've got some good telemetry here giving us altitude, battery levels, signal strength. You can also have a split screen to use VR goggles if you want. You can turn this screen upside down 180 degrees yeah, it'll give us the GPS signal and the number of satellites and this will take us into settings a picture here and change and switch between photo and video and start video here too but we'll see how these features work during the test flight and let me just show you on my iPhone here if we click on settings go allow to access location while you're using the app click on settings here we've got parameter settings so here you can set the maximum flight altitude up to a maximum 150 meters maximum flight distance of up to 500 meters but this is related to FPV and maximum flight radius this would be for the circle me function if you want to go further than 500 meters, I think you just leave this off. Detection, it detects gyro status, barometer status, compass status, and GPS status. Got a flight data log.
The camera settings, 1080p, 2K, uh, 4K, not applicable for this one. But the, I think the device needs to be connected before you can select your settings here in the settings. So now I'm going to take it and see how it performs, how the functions and features work. I think more importantly, how well and how stable this camera is going to perform and see if the app works well with this. I previously did a comparison with the Beast and the SJRC F11. But the SJRC F11 doesn't have a 2K camera and the Beast does. So at a later stage I'll do a proper comparison once I've done all the tests including a range test with this. And do a comparison with this and the Beast in a later video too. And I'll put a link in the description if you want to if you haven't seen the comparison between the SJRC F11 and the Beast. And this is what the battery charger indicator looks like when it's charging and when all bars are full it's finished charging and charging can take up to four hours. I'm going to post the flight tests in a separate video or else this video will be too long. But here's a short teaser of some flight footage but because this is integrated into this video at 1080p it won't show you the resolution at 2K 2048 by 1152 pixels. So stay tuned to see the camera features, functions and flight tests in the next video that I post. So, please subscribe, like, comment and share if you like my videos.